Hey, welcome everyone to our exciting American Queen Steamboat Company webinar. I am Michelle Arian and I am the Associate Editor here for Recommend. I'll be your moderator today. Um, the webinar will be led by Hai Cooper. During this presentation, Hai will give you pointers on special profit opportunities when selling American river cruises on American Queen Steamboat Company, as well as the latest information on 2016 and 2017 cruises and historical background information to help you close that sale. Hi Cooper is the Western Regional VP of Sales for American Queen Steamboat Company, and he has over 53 years of experience in the travel industry. During his time with the company, Mr. Cooper has cons consistently been a top producer and salesman of the year in helping travel agency community fill the boats. This presentation will last about 45 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. Please type your questions in the question screen during the presentation. You can find it on the right-hand side. And we'll try to include as many as we have time for it during our Q&A. However, if we don't get to your question, don't worry. American Queen will follow up with you via email to make sure your questions are answered. Also, at the end of the Q&A, we will announce the winner of the free cruise. Now let's get started. Hi. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Gosh, it's tremendous to be on this webinar today. We've had over 506 travel agents register for it, and we've got great participation today. American Queen Steamboat Company has two boats, a big one and a small one, kind of a mama boat and a baby boat. The larger one is the lower one in the picture, the American Queen on the Mississippi River system, and her and a baby sister is the American Empress on the Columbia and Snake Rivers in the Pacific Northwest. And we've got a little freeze here, but we'll unfreeze it for you in a second. Sorry, everyone. American Queen Steamboat Company, travel is glorious once more on our uniquely American river cruises. Now, there's one reason why this picture is in here. That's my new employee fan trip in 1982 when I traveled with my family on the Delta Queen Steamboat Company, which was a different company. We're an entirely different company. We're not related. But back then, even domestic river cruising was very dressy. And you can see I'm wearing a suit and tie. I probably took four suits with me that trip and a lot of shirts and ties. My wife is wearing a long dress. That isn't the way it is at all anymore. We're uh, country club casual, resort casual, and no formal wear at all is required or ever worn. The way you dress to go to work is fine for everything, including the farewell dinner, the welcome reception, all of it. We've aged a little in the right picture, and my girls have grown up, and we have three grandchildren about the same size as my two little girls. I had just come from the airlines. My wife made those little sailor dresses for them. Now, this isn't about Steamboat Willie, which came out in 1928, and it is considered to be the debut of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, but it was the first fully synchronized cartoon. Steamboat Willie. I loved it when I saw it as a kid. Well, this is important. All of you know the man on the screen. His name is Robert Fulton. And in 1807, he designed and built the Clermont. We called it a third grade, Fulton's Folly. And it went 150 miles up the Hudson River from New York to Albany, 150 miles against the wind and current, 32 hours. And he proved beyond any doubt that steam was a very effective means of transportation. Prior to that, prior to Mr. Fulton and the Clermont, it was foot power, horsepower, or wind power. You walked, you went horse, covered wagon, stagecoach, and if you wanted to go from the East Coast to the West Coast, you went on a square rig around Cape Horn. It was foot power, horsepower, wind power. And if you don't remember anything else from the webinar today, I want you to remember this. The paddle wheel steamboat 
is the first mechanical means of transportation. Now, we have the largest steamboat ever built exclusively for cruising on inland rivers, the American Queen. Largest steamboat ever built for cruising on inland rivers. 418 feet long and 90 feet wide, draws eight and a half feet, has six passenger decks, and carries 432 guests currently in 12 cabin categories. We're going to change the cats a little bit for 2017. And it cruises the entire navigable length of the Mississippi River from St. Paul to New Orleans. This is the dining room, named after a famous 19th century steamboat, the J.M. White. And you can see the captain's table in front of the wine wall. You can see the maitre d' station there. It's 12 feet high in the middle, 20 feet high to, as they say, the deckheads. It's an absolutely breathtaking dining room. And the food is exactly what you'd expect. There's always a choice on every lunch or dinner menu of a beef, poultry, fish, veggie, special diets can be accommodated. All of the ones I know of and lots that I've never heard of, but low-cal, low-sodium, gluten-free, veggie, heart-smart, food allergy. If you have a client that has an unusual food allergy, just tell our reservations sales agent, and they'll let the chef know, and we will accommodate your client. We have alternate dining locations on both vessels because we cruise through the heartland of America. We've named the alternate venue on the American Queen, our flag boat, if you will, the Front Porch, the Front Porch Cafe, the Front Porch of America. It's a beautiful inside-outside room. You can dine uh, al fresco. Uh, you can dine inside. It's open 24-7. And great food in the Front Porch Cafe, as we have in the dining room. Well. I always mention the rockers. Some of my colleagues think I'm off mine for doing it, but there are plenty. You don't have to, you know, grab one, put a towel over it. You'll see our guests out on deck at any hour of the day or night enjoying the beautiful river scenery. Now that gets me to why do people go on river cruises, any river cruises? Well, this is CLIA data. I didn't make it up, okay, and it's especially applicable to American Queen Steamboat Company. People will go for scenery, history, and lack of motion. You've got beautiful scenery on both sides of the boats every single day of the trip. You're not out in the middle of the ocean looking out at the horizon and white caps and coming to an occasional port. We're on a river. We're on America's greatest inland rivers. So people go for scenery. They go for history. Mark Twain, the South, the Civil War, all the historic river towns and cities of America on the Mississippi. And, of course, all the Lewis and Clark history, which we'll talk about on the Columbia River in the Pacific Northwest. They go for history, scenery, and lack of motion. If you're not seasick sitting at your computer now listening to this webinar, I guarantee you're not going to get seasick on our riverboats. There is no motion. Let's look at the interior of the American Queen. Okay, this is the grand staircase, the polished brass, the wrought iron, the carved baluster, the painted ceiling, the antique chandelier, and it leads not down to a casino. There are casino boats at many of the ports on the Mississippi, but not on the vessel. It leads to the main deck lounge, captain's bar area where we have entertainment every evening. And if you go in one direction, you're in the grand Saloon, the finest showroom on the rivers and oceans of the world. It's loosely meant to emulate Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. with hanging boxes and a balcony and a proscenium arch over the stage. That's that inverted lighted U. The stage slides out even bigger. We have a full range of day and evening activities and great shows with strong performers every evening on both boats. No lip syncing, no smoke and mirrors. They're really out there singing their hearts out for you. Huge dance floor, and when we talk about groups, uh, that is a great opportunity. I've had 
line dancers, round dancers, square dancers, ballroom dancers, tap dancers, and the hardwood so they can't make little dents in the floor, dancing with the stars dancers. It's a fabulous showroom and lots and dancing every evening. We have our own six piece orchestra on every cruise. Well, I was on an ocean cruise over the holidays and I gotta tell you I pay through the nose for the Wi Fi. Now more and more of the ships are uh including it, but many don't. We have free Wi Fi on both vessels, anywhere, including your cabin and in public rooms and in a little uh call it an internet cafe if you will on both boats you'll see one of them but it is totally free and everybody travels with a device on the river and on the move we have bicycles on a first come first serve basis on both vessels with helmets and biking gloves and locks which you don't need our chairman is very athletic and he's a runner and a biker and a triathlete and he picked the bikes they're good, they're well maintained. We also on the American Queen have a small pool and a gym with treadmills and a static bike. We have basic shore excursions included in every port of call for both vessels and I'll explain them a little bit later. We also have our own fleet of buses. They're wrapped to look like either the American Queen or the American Empress when we get to the Northwest. It looks three-dimensional but it isn't and if you have a client who may be mobility challenged in any way, no problems. We have two large elevators on both boats. We also have a wheelchair and scooter lift at the back of the bus here above where the louver is that opens, they lifts the scooter up, they tie it down in the bus, and your clients are ready to go. So they'll have no problems whatsoever. Where does the American Queen operate? That's the single most common question I get. We operate the length of the Mississippi River, part of the Ohio, the Tennessee, and the Cumberland. Uh, port cities are shown with the red circle on the Mississippi, St. Paul, St. Louis, Memphis, and New Orleans, and so on. Now, our single most common and popular itinerary is Memphis to New Orleans or New Orleans to Memphis or round trip New Orleans. All of our programs are in cruises are nine day, seven night. So if your client is traveling, let's say this coming Monday, I have a neighbor that's going with a few of their friends and they're flying to Memphis on Sunday, the cruise leaves on Monday. And what's included is a hotel at the front end of the Lux Hotel, they're staying at the Sheraton in Memphis. We use great properties in every city, and you get room tax, porterage, full American breakfast on both day. You check in for the cruise at the hotel. You can get all your questions answered. We take your picture. You get your boarding pass. All that happens at the hotel, and then the luggage is transferred to the vessel before you get there, so it's waiting in the cabinet. My wife is very impatient. She doesn't. She hates it on the ships if you got to wait an hour or more for your bags because she wants to unpack and then go explore the vessel. All of the stops are shown, and of course we start in Memphis or end in Memphis. You can go to BB King, Beale Street, Barbecue, Sun Records, and of course Graceland. Well, you all know the man on the screen. He's the most argue, arguably the, the the most famous American fiction writer, and but from his major nonfiction work, Life on the Mississippi, in his own words, this is what he had to say. This is from Chapter One, Life on the Mississippi. He said, "When I was a boy, helping to inhabit that small town on the west bank of the Mississippi." My comrades and I had but one permanent ambition. That was to be a steamboat man. Boy after boy managed to run away and get on the river. And by and by, I said I was going to run away too. And I wasn't coming home again until I was a pilot. 
and could come home in glory. A steamboat pilot in those days was the only unfettered and entirely independent human being that walked on this earth. The pilot house was a sumptuous glass temple offering a princely view of the great Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, a magnificent Mississippi, a mile-wide tide shining in the sun. I thought I would die at the wheel when my mission had ended, but that was not to be. Oh, but I enjoyed that profession far more than any that I followed since, and I took a measureless pride in it. That's tough on the vocal cords. I don't have that written down. We have a Mark Twain on a number of cruises. We have a Mark Twain theme. I'll, I'll point it out to you. But Mark Twain got his steamboat pilot's license in 1859 at the age of 24. The pilot paddle wheel steamboats from St. Louis to New Orleans. And of course, think of the books. Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, Becky Thatcher. They're all alive and well and living in Hannibal, Missouri of St. Louis, and so much of it, what he wrote has to do with the river. Well, we have 19 themes in 2016. You can see them all on our website or in our brochure. Solid, great content, well-researched, fun. Your clients will love them. Well, here are uh, it's a sampling, 4th of July cruises. Why not? We're mom, the flag, and pecan pie or apple pie. And who could be more all-American than um, the American Queen Steamboat Company, whose roots go back to the Delta Queen Steamboat Company in 1890, the oldest American flag cruise line. And we have music of the 50s and 60s themes, and holiday Christmas market cruises, door decorating, tree trimming, caroling, uh, brass band, Santa, Papa Noel, Dickens Christmas, plus Christmas markets. Wonderful theme cruise, bourbon cruises, bourbon, and the Ohio River is the heart of bourbon country, the Ohio River in northern Kentucky. Great theme and great opportunity for you to do individuals or groups. The furthest north we go on the Mississippi is St. Paul, Minnesota. There's a waterfall called St. Anthony's Falls just above downtown St. Paul, and we don't go up or down waterfalls very well. So that's as far as the Mississippi is navigable. But you can go to Lake Otaska, Minnesota, the headwaters of the Mississippi, 150 miles north of St. Paul if you have time. Now, many of you have been on Panama Canal cruises, Trans Canal, or have had clients that have done it. The upper Mississippi River has four times as many locks, and Bagel too, that's the Panama Canal, which has only six, 26 locks and dams on the upper Mississippi River. And going through the locks is a fun experience. You'll see our passengers out on deck at almost any hour of the day or night enjoying the lock experience. And the upper Mississippi is green. It's winding. It's rural. It's remote. There are huge bluffs. It's really gorgeous. It is truly an American experience in the heartland of America, from St. Paul to St. Louis, and there's the big McDonald's arch, the Gateway Arch, Gateway to the West in St. Louis. Here's the American Empress. I live on the West Coast in Orange County, and so this is only a two-hour flight for my wife and myself, and we love doing it in the summer and when the uh, Rainier cherries are being sold along the river. I took this with my camera. My kids gave me, I, oh, years ago, a digital camera. I don't know where it is anymore because you get such high resolution with the camera that's built into your phone. The American Empress operates on the Columbia River from Portland to Clarkston one way, and that's a week's cruise, or from Clarkston to Portland. I kind of like the westbound because you're going from the high desert inland agricultural country down into the Columbia River Gorge and the 
Pacific Northwest rainforest type scenery, and I'll show you some of it here in a minute. The American Empress holds 223 guests. The American Queen, remember I said holds 432. This is the largest overnight riverboat west of the Mississippi. And we were talking about locks and dams. There are eight locks on the area of the Columbia and Snake Rivers that we operate on. Now, in the footsteps of great explorers, Lewis and Clark, Meriwether Lewis on the left, William Clark on the right. After the Louisiana Purchase, which was in 1803 when President Jefferson bought the Louisiana Territory from Napoleon of France, he paid 15 million bucks, or four cents per acre. That was one heck of a buy. It's now 15 states. And he commissioned the first overland expedition to the Pacific Coast. And these two gentlemen led the Corps of Discovery, 1804 to 1806. They wanted to see if there was a water route to the west. Well, it was pretty tough. It took them a long time. They, but they were incredible leaders. They started out with 33 really tough military and frontiersman type people. They got home. We only lost one man in the whole expedition, and that was from a uh, ruptured appendix. Couldn't do much about it, you know, out in the boonies in those days. You'll learn everything about Lewis and Clark on our cruises on the American Empress on the Columbia River. Portland's Rose Test Garden with over 8,000 roses. Bonneville Dam, the first lock and dam east of Portland, 40 miles east of Portland, has a fish ladder so the salmon can get upstream and a little, uh, like a spout, like to shoot them out, uh, the little fry the baby fish when they are getting back, going back to the ocean. And you can go to the Dalles at the end of the Oregon, Oregon Trail. It is so historic. The towns are very interesting along the Columbia. And of course, you visit the orchards and vineyards of the Walla Walla wine country, the Napa of the North. Let's have a look at the interior. This is the Astoria dining room on the American Empress. Really lovely. We've read on it beautifully. You have a beautiful river view from anywhere in the room. This is our river grill, our late night, our, excuse me, our alternate dining venue. And we've just replaced those tables. I'm waiting for a new picture. But the river grill, as well as the dining room, are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the river grill, however, uh, becomes a really nice alternate dining venue, a grill where you get the surf and turf, you can dine al fresco or al inside, I guess. <laughs> and for dinner, you make a reservation, but it's all included. There's no upcharge, and it's fabulous in the river grill. So you don't, you're not regimented in going into the dining room for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are alternate venues and 24-hour room service on both vessels. This is the paddle wheel lounge on the American Empress. You can see the big red paddle wheel through the windows there, and it's a craftsman with the stained glass, late night entertainment, dancing, really strong entertainment. This is where the River Laureate makes his or her uh, office on the American Empress, and they do river chats. Uh, river lore is like stories of everything you get to see and do, and uh, the history of the river, and, all the history that there is on our great rivers. They also do talks in our Grand Saloon, especially about like Lewis and Clark, things like that. Bar in the River Grill. And here's our internet cafe on the American Empress. We have a somewhat smaller one. And these are free, of course. You can drive boarding passes 24 hours before you're going to you know, uh, check in for your return flight. If you don't know how to do that, we'll help you. We have a more modest one in the Mark Twain Gallery on the American Queen. American Empress has four passenger decks. Those orangey cabins are the most popular and single largest category. They're category C, as in Charlie. There's 75 of them. It's 67% of the boat. 
All of this is on the website and in the brochure. We have two luxury suites on the American Empress. They are the first to go. 410 square feet. If you have uh, high-end clients, they want the best there is. They're the LS cabins on the American Empress. And of course, you know, with uh, private the balconies, two of them actually that are connected. The American Empress is all outside staterooms and the majority of the vessel has private balconies. This is category A, 310 square feet, category B, 210 to 250, and this is what we ride in every time we go. We love them. But be careful on the Empress, it's either queen or twin. On the American Queen, they're convertible, so they can make the twins into a queen and the queen into a twin. 67% of the boat, 180 square feet, large window, private veranda. Here's the reason why in this one, which is a twin, it can't be a queen. We can move the nightstand out, but those lights are bolted through the wall and so are the headboards. That's not the situation on the American Queen. So be sure to check with our res agent so your client gets exactly what they want. Our chief purser took this and sent it to me. It's at Astoria, in Astoria, Washington, at the mouth of the Columbia River. You can see some of the ships anchored prior to the river pilots taking them up to Portland, which is overnight for us. And our speed, the old Columbia River light ship, which is now a museum. And off to the right, you can't see it, just the edge of the roof, is the Columbia River Maritime Museum. Astoria at the mouth of the river was named after John Jacob Astor, who started out as a fur trader. This is Hood River behind the American Empress. This is the town, this Mount Hood, and I'm told this photo hasn't been photoshopped in the Hood River lift bridge in the Columbia River Gorge. Hood River is the windsurfing capital of the world. That's where it all started. Multnomah Falls, which is spectacular and three tiers, and you'll see it. And of course, the Columbia River Gorge, which is truly an extraordinary American experience. It's a national scenic area, 80 miles. You spend a lot of time in the gorge because the scenery is so gorgeous, no pun intended. This is Hell's Canyon on uh, the Snake River, and we'll talk about it when we talk about shore excursions. Well, the American Queen, as I mentioned, is the largest steamboat ever built for cruising on inland rivers. 132 guests, 418 feet long. It's huge. Mark Twain wrote, someday someone will build the largest steamboat the world has ever known. She'll be long, white, and greeny in the sun with her twin black backs will be the American queen. Let the good times roll. They say, les bon temps brûlés, lower Mississippi. This is Oak Alley, the grand dame of the river road with an arcade of 24 300-year-old live oaks leading up to the mansion, quarter mile from the river, just over the levee. And we have golf carts, if anybody has, you know, would have difficulty walking up to the home. And nearby is St. Francisville, Louisiana, which is uh, two miles long and two yards wide, kind of, established in 1809. Very interesting, historically rich city. And not away, the largest plantation home in the South. The South's largest remaining antebellum mansion, built prior to the Civil War which was 1861 to 1865. It has three floors, it has 64 bedrooms and 365 openings, one for every day of the year. It's called the White Castle of Louisiana. And on the lower Mississippi, if you're starting or ending in New Orleans, the French Quarter is 96 square blocks, eight by 12, of fun and history and not just Bourbon Street, it's great. And it's right on the river. And of course, the romantic river road plantations like Oak Alley, Civil War sites like the 
uh, National Military Park in Vicksburg. It was considered the Gibraltar of the South. We have Civil War themed cruises and beautiful gardens in the spring at all of the southern homes. This was taken in Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez has over 500 antebellum structures. This is at uh, flowers at Stanton Hall, but 500 structures built prior to 1861. The majority of the millionaires in America lived on the lower Mississippi pre-Civil War because they were making their money off slaves and cotton and sugar cane and indigo. The upper Mississippi is scenic with lots of national uh, natural wonders like the bald and golden eagles on the upper Mississippi. Um, and we have a um, premium shore excursion to the National Eagle Center in Wabasha, Minnesota. And uh, the eagles are, it's a rehab center, but they're, they're not, they don't get to go home. It's, they've been injured and you get, and they have to stay there, but you get to, uh, get up close and, and personal. I call it a beak to nose experience at the National Eagle Center and that chance of natural wonders like cave and rock and historically rich cities uh, along the rivers like St. Louis with the Anheuser-Busch Brewery and the Clydesdales and of course brilliant fall colors on the upper Mississippi River. I'm always asked, hey, hi, what happens when you get to, or there's high water and you get to a low bridge? Well, here's exactly what happened. The pilot house on the American Queen retracts. It's hydraulic, and they drive it from the bridge wings, the captains and pilots, and this is eight inches of clearance. We make a party of it uh, under the Hannibal, Missouri Railroad Bridge in September of 2014. We have our own buses, we get to all the ports, and sometimes you got to duck. And high water is a bigger problem than low. And sea level is sea level is sea level, so if you're on an ocean cruise, sea level. However, rivers have too much, it's called flood, and too little, it's called drought. But we can handle all of it, and here's how. The Ohio, Tennessee, and Cumberland have Great historical landmarks, uh, upper left-hand corner, Shiloh National Military Park on the Tennessee River, and great cities like Cincinnati, Ohio, and Newport, Kentucky, and Louisville, Kentucky, and Marietta, Ohio, and Music City uh, in Nashville on the Cumberland. Uh, uh, we do tours of Ryman Auditorium, the original Grand Ole Opry, but it's just a museum now. And then with the cannon, that's at Lookout Mountain overlooking Chattanooga on the Tennessee River. Okay. And the American Queen has six passenger decks, has a mix of inside and outside staterooms. And I'll explain how you know that works. And uh, it's not all private veranda like the American Empress, but it works well, and you'll see why. We are. Recategories, recategorizing for 2017. The new brochure will be out in April, and we're combining the insides into one category. So there'll only be one category of inside. But typically, and by the way, every cabin on both vessels has a flat screen TV, individual controls for the AC, a telephone, of course. Uh, the American Queen has 22 channels on the flat screen. You can look at what the shore excursions are going to be like or info on the bikes and what the hop-on, hop-off shore excursions are. These are private veranda category AA on the American Queen, 190 square feet, and they can all be pushed together or moved apart. This is a deluxe outside category A, 210 square feet with an open veranda. This is an example or a sample of the an inside, and I'll never forget a couple walked out of their door. We were in a cabin across the hall with a balcony, a veranda, and this couple didn't know I never advertised I'm with the company, and said, "Oh, you should see our cabin. It's so nice, <laughs> and the same size essentially as our outside." My wife said, "God, I think that's bigger than our cabin, but they're very nice." 
good-sized bathrooms on the American Queen, great amenities, robes, heavy towels, hair dryers, irons and ironing boards available on request. We pay 10% commission on our premium shore excursions. You can book them uh, via C, Shore Excursions of America, or your clients can purchase them on board. I think it's found money if you say to your clients, look, you might want to do this or that, and uh, do it for them. Now, here's an example of some premiums and what they cost. Um, I did this. It's fun for kids of all ages. The next thing on my bucket list is skydiving. <laughs> and I'm worth more dead than alive, like most of us. Zip lining in Astoria, 119 bucks. Fun for children of all ages. And kids can go if they meet a certain height requirement. It's like the rides at a theme park. You know, there's a little thing. If a kid tall enough, they can do it. It's really fun. And in Dubuque, Iowa, the premium experience, the Field of Dreams, the uh, Farm Toy Museum. But the best part of this is going out to the corn. It's not a corny tour at all. It's wonderful. The state has got a lot of corn. And it's the site of the 1989 Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams. And the guys still come out of the corn, the old Chicago Black Sox wearing their vintage uniforms. They were young men and extras in the film. They've made a living on it ever since, traveling the world, talking about the movie. The house is there. I occasionally watch it on late night television. The diamond is there. They've got all kind of old-fashioned bats and balls and gloves. It's great. Now, this is one premium shore excursion not to be missed. If you have clients that begin or end a cruise in Memphis, the King's Memphis with Graceland, Memphis through the eyes of the king, Beale Street, Sun Studio, uh, and of course, Graceland and all that it has. And folks, Priscilla Presley is the godmother of the American Empress. So we're pretty well connected in Memphis. We've got a number of flat rate promotions. And you won't remember this, but just call rents. For this summer, we're doing flat rates subject to availability in certain categories. Uh, in the insides, $15.99 per person, double lock, and, or $23.99 single, or in you know, uh, mid-range cabins, $22.49. And there are the applicable voyages. We also have a 2016 early booking discount that expires on May 31st on selected voyages. And our res people will help you with all of this. We also have, we're getting a lot of business on the books. People do plan ahead for 2017. And the biggest discount is now. It goes down. OK, I repeat, it goes down. Uh, savings of 1,000 per stateroom uh, on selected sailings, uh, 800 on others, 600 on others. and just ask for the early booking discount. It's pay in full at time of booking, but that's not so bad because those bookings stick. They're not going to go away. And now, many of you, some of you have sold world cruises. It's a great sale. And this is our world cruise. There are very few cabins left. We've combined three sailings. And we did initially allow people to book segments. We're not going to do that in 2017 because that blocked some cabins from sale for a full voyage. Mighty Mississippi Voyages, the full length of the Mississippi, from St. Paul to New Orleans, from New Orleans to St. Paul. Great cruise and a big sale for you. And they can see it from north to south, top to bottom. And our customer profile. I think you all know who goes. Their average age is 65. They're well educated. They are married. They have good discretionary uh, spend. And 
they're homeowners, they're empty nesters, they've lived in their home for 10 or 15 or more years, and their demographers call them joiners and belongers. I'm describing myself. We're empty nesters, we own our own home. I was it when I was in my 40s and went on that first cruise when you saw me when I had hair. Now, group sales opportunities, and you really have to call. Our minimum group size is only 10 people. There's no upfront money required to block or to hold group space, and potential groups include the world. There are more group opportunities than there are grains of sand on the beach. Clubs, organizations, friends, neighbors, performance groups. I've had them all. Uh, musical performance groups, corrals, barber shoppers, banjo players, Dixieland bands, every kind of group you can think of. Minimum only 10 people, you get your first free TC bed, 11th is free, no upfront money is required, a graduated commission structure, and co-op support available, brochures, flyers, shells, postcards, images, all the usual marketing collateral, and our RSDs will help you. And we can, we also send out, once you're on our mailing list, customizable offer emails, digital uh, emails, digital marketing, I call it, that you can easily forward to your uh, one client or your entire database. We've won every award you can think of. You won't remember this, but our res people will tell you we have four salespeople currently in the field. We're looking for a fifth in the upper Midwest, Bob Salmon is our senior VP of sales and picture your clients on board, picture your earnings and sell American Queen Steamboat Company. Now, the way I'd like you to sell this is as follows. We're not a cruise. We're a historic experience where history unfolds around every bend of the river. You're discovering Mark Twain's America at seven miles an hour on a paddle wheel powered time machine. And, I'm gonna, uh, and, and by the way, I wrote that and I'm starting to see it appear in the brochure. I think I should have copyrighted it. I could have made some money here. Uh, we're not a cruise. We're a historic experience where history unfolds around every bend of the river. You're discovering Mark Twain's America or Lewis and Clark's America at seven miles an hour on a paddle wheel powered time machine. Now, Mark Twain said a steamboat is like a wedding cake, but without the complications. Well, he had a lot to say about paddle wheel steamboats. And our farewell toast that the captain does, you know, at the farewell dinner is as follows. And it's for you right now. Here's to you all. And we want you to know that our sentiments are honest and real. May your days be as bright and your hearts be as light as the spray from our old paddle wheel. Now, before we open up to questions, which we're going to do in one second, I, I want to tell you two things. On March 4, I retired from American Queen Steamboat Company after 53 years in the business. I started with TWA as a resident in San Francisco and essentially I've only had two jobs and to travel more to do all the stuff on my bucket list. And so you won't be able to email me, but any, uh, you know, when you reach out to the company, your RSC will call you. I'm going to be doing uh, webinars for American Queen Steamboat Company, you know, going forward. Now, uh, if you want to recommend a couple of books, I would recommend to your clients who are going, buy them and give them to them as a gift. What a great gift. Undaunted Courage by Stephen Ambrose, about uh, the Lewis and Clark Corps of Discovery, or Mark Twain's Mississippi, uh, which is a great book. Oh, gosh, the uh, author's name escapes me. It's just called Mark Twain's Mississippi, not by Mark Twain. Um, or the first chapter of Mark Twain's Life on the Mississippi. But anyway, Michelle, 
thank you so much for coordinating and I'm ready for questions. Thanks, hi, that was great. You actually had some kudo remarks instead of questions on the question box, so everyone is enjoying <laughs> your presentation. Uh, one question that came up a few times is, is there anything for children to do on board or any children programs available? No, not a whole heck of a lot, very little. They've got to be kids that are interested in uh, the whole experience. It's an experiential product, the education uh, about the Mark Twain, the Lewis and Clark, the River, the history of America. But uh, we, we uh, don't really have babysitting available. I was lucky. My girls were four and six in that early picture that you saw. And they sat on our laps. They went to all the shows with us, even the late night stuff. And they'd fall asleep. But and they kind of sort of still remember it. So I would say Disney would be the best answer I can give for that question. Uh, just as a reminder before I go to the next question, don't log off as we'll be announcing the winner of the free cruise at the end of the Q&A. Okay, the next question. Does the cruise, this is a three-part question from Warren Kaplan. Does the cruise include open bar? And how about wines and lunch at dinner? Oh, okay. Um, we include uh, fancy coffees, bottled water, soft drinks, complimentary beer and wine with dinner all you want, uh, but not an open bar. Thank you, Warren. That's a good question. And I'm sorry, I actually had a slide. I took it out, and I've got to put it back in. Uh, <laughs> and what's the next part? Another one from Warren. Does the paddle wheel make constant noise at night? None at all. Uh, it's very quiet. There's no right vibration. You almost have to spit over the side to see if you're moving. It's a wonderful uh, you can be in a cabin near it, it's not going to bother you. And speaking of cabins, we have one from Peg Nitzkoff. Are all rooms window rooms? Um, yes, they are on the American Empress, but not on the American Queen. Uh, they're all window except for the interior staterooms, but then we also have make some connecting for multi-generational family groups, grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, and, you know, kids that are old enough or bring their own devices, we leave them to their own devices, uh, electronics and so on, but uh, there are some that are inside on the American Queen, which you're looking at on the screen. Okay, next is from Richard Tennant, and he would like to know if the experience is any different sailing north to south versus south to north. No, it really isn't. Um, I like, like if I'm doing the upper Mississippi, I like south to north. I don't know why. You move a little faster, uh, a little more port time, I think one extra stop, because you got a tailwind, so to speak, a tail current on the upper and on the lower too. But... Uh, on the lower, whether you go Memphis to New Orleans or New Orleans to Memphis, I, I don't think it makes any, never mind, I don't think it makes any difference. <laughs> uh, the next question is regarding theme cruises from Bobby Van Hoek, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last names. Are there any special theme cruises available, for example, like a wine tasting cruise? Um, we have wine tasting available on the Columbia and vintners often come aboard, but there is no specific theme that I'm aware of, and that's a great, great suggestion. Thank you, and I'll, I'll, I'll write that one up. I, I think that uh, that would pull very well, but we do, do have wine groups <coughs> that come, and we'll work that out with you. Uh, the only uh, alcohol sort of flavored cruise, for lack of a better word, is the <laughs> bourbon cruise on the Ohio River that goes to, you know, all the, and the all the info on that is on the website. But uh, we do do wine tastings and vintners come aboard on the Columbia because there are new wineries opening every single day of the year in Oregon and Washington. 
Okay, Jeff Sch Schmelzer says that he grew up and lived in Bentendorf, Iowa for 50 years and always enjoyed the Calliope when the ship went by. Is the Calliope still played? Yes, the, the uh, Calliope is still played. And gee, I've got to add some slides back in. I was afraid it was going to run too long, Michelle. And I took <laughs> out the Calliope. We have the world's largest and loudest steam Calliope on the American Queen. You can hear it five miles away on a windless day. And it is still traditional for the Calliopus to play on entering and leaving a port to announce the boat's arrival and departure. It's a steam pianer. And you can't play Beethoven on it, you got to play really fast music like waiting on the levee, waiting for the Robert E. Lee, you know, <laughs> waiting on the levee. <laughs> you can't, you because when you hold the key down, it goes, you know, because it's steam. And you don't have to wear asbestos gloves, I guarantee it. And if you can play four notes consecutively, you'll earn a Vox Aliopus certificate uh, entitling you to play the steam calliope on the oceans and rivers of the world if you can find one. A friend of mine made one out of an old Electrolux canister, uh, you know, vacuum cleaner, and he uh, marches in local parades with it. <laughs> but thank you. That's a great question. Uh, another question that came up a few times is, is the ship um, wheelchair accessible, and are there any handicap accessible rooms, specifically bathrooms with seats on either of the ships? Yes, there are uh, on both, and uh, we carry, um, you know, uh, people with certain challenges on both vessels. And yes, we have uh, one on the American Queen, and Res will tell you about it, which one. I believe one on the American Empress that are ADA compliant with uh, no door <coughs> sill or jam <laughs> and uh, low light switches, a roll in bathroom, and seats and grab rails available. And I mean, I have seen a couple of times over the years on the Mississippi River uh, quadriplegics with a care person. And God bless them. I mean, that's a that's that's really a difficult challenge and they do manage and uh, the hallways are wide and so wheelchairs are okay, scooters are okay and as I mentioned in the buses we have our own buses on the uh, Columbia River as well they just say American Empress not American Queen and have the, the lift that will lift them up and the buses kneel um, when they even for just the regular guests when the driver opens the door, pulls up to the curb and opens the door, it, the bus lowers. So you just step right straight in. It's great. Okay, Georgia Brown would like to know if the pay and full bookings are refundable. If the pay and full bookings are refundable, no, there's a $250 cancellation penalty if they cancel for any reason. But, uh, People will pay to get the offer, and they do stick. Now, I suggest that's with our insurance. I suggest if there is other insurance that you sell to check it out and you know uh, find out. But uh, you know you'll just go on to the next book, and uh, most of them stick, and which is a good thing. Now, uh, all of our specials are pay in full at time of booking. Uh, we pick that up from a very well known. European River Cruise Company, and that's the model we're using. And uh, the, however, for groups, the deposit is 500 per person at time of booking. Remember, a group is only 10 people with the balance at 90 days prior, but there's still the 250 buck cancellation on it. Okay. You know, if they cancel outside of 90 days for any reason. Okay. I hope that, that answers your question. The next one comes from Melanie Korsh, and she would like to know if transfers are included from airport to pre-hotel vessel and from vessel post-hotel to the airport. Not pre. We tried it. It, it just was uh, difficult. And so where the arrival transfer, your clients have to get under their own steam, under their own power, 
to the hotel. Once they get to the hotel, we take over. We'll provide the final transfer at the end. Uh, it does cost, it was 20, I think it may have gone up, don't hold me to this, but I think it, it may have gone up to 30. Uh, and what my wife and I do is we <laughs> grab a cab, the airport in New Orleans, uh, or Memphis, or Portland, they're not very far, and you know, a few minutes you're there, and it's just quick. And then even on the part, now, for your clients, because if they buy our departure transfer, they put their bags outside the room, we'll see that they're lined up next to the bus. Uh, you can check to make sure your, bus, your luggage gets on the bus, and, you know, your, you know, there's that comfort level that that uh, engenders. But uh, we, we always just grab a van or something. But we do have the departure, but not the arrival. Okay? And by okay. the way, the hop-on, hop-off, which I didn't go into detail, and I want to do just for a second, if that's all right, is this, that in every single port we have free Ho-hos, hop-on, hop-off, shore excursions. We take one bus, we have a local guide, goes around the town, the city, the village, the area. Uh, we have admittance to certain attractions which would normally cost, and they're free on the hop-on, hop-off, and you can you know, find out all about the area. The premium ones are the more extensive, more, uh, you know, expensive, not really, they're not bad. You saw the, what, 89 bucks? for Grace, the Graceland Tour in Memphis, that's a premium. And those are available. You can buy them on board or you can sell them to your clients. By the way, I always forget this. My total product, American Queen Steamboat Company's total product is 27,000 beds per year. Okay? Imagine about five of the mega liners, you know, sailing out of uh, Fort Lauderdale or Miami. Uh, that's my entire product for a year. We're, thanks to all of you, we're running 85% of where we were at this time last year. We're selling the tail end of 16, all of 17 very, very well. And I can guarantee that uh, American Queen Steamboat Company's wonderful riverboat product will exceed your clients' expectations. And uh, so um, if your question didn't get answered, I'll make sure that your RSD gets it. And uh, if um, I know everybody's <laughs> sitting on the edge of their seat, did you put me in for a free cruise too? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> anyway, my kids grew up on the, uh, the sea boat. But, uh, if you have a winner, like to hear, then if you'll email it to me, and I'll call and explain everything and congratulate the, the person in person. Okay. Um, for any of you who, I know there's a lot of questions that didn't get answered, a representative from American Queen Steamboat will be reaching out to you to answer your questions. And for those of you inquiring about if the webinar will be available for you to refer to later, yes, it will. We will be sending you a link to that as well. Now, for the winner of the free cruise, should we get a drum roll here? The winner <laughs> is Janelyn Carney. So congratulations, Janelyn, on your free cruise. Okay, thanks. And if you can send me how to reach uh, Janelyn and, and, you know, we'll, we'll get moving on it. Anyway, thank y'all, y'all. We'll and, and have a great week, and sell American Queen Steamboat. Thank you, uh, Gary and Tanisha and Michelle.